Okay, in a previous video, we defined what it meant for two numbers to be equivalent modulo a natural number n. So let's just recall, we say that a is congruent to b modulo n and we write it as follows. So the, that is defined by n dividing a minus b. In other words, a minus b is a multiple of n. So now we want to look at one more definition that uh, can be tied to any equivalence relation. And by the way, we showed that this was an equivalence relation, at least one part of that proof in a previous video. So this uh, definition is for an equivalence class related to this equivalence relation. So for x in z, so for an integer x, define the equivalence class of x with respect to, so I'll shorten with respect to as that, so with respect to this equivalence modulo n by the following. So we'll put this x in brackets. So we have x and this is going to be equal to all integers a such that a is congruent to x mod n. Good, so let's look at this. We have a fixed x, and for that x we're defining this set. So let's look at some examples. So for example, if we have n equals three, and let's say x equals zero, so that means we want the equivalence class of zero. So that will be all integers a such that a is congruent to zero mod n. And so now let's recall that definition. That means that when we uh, divide a by n, so sorry, that's three. When we divide a by three, we get a remainder of zero or a minus zero is divisible by three. That's another way to think of it. So if a minus zero is divisible by three, that means three divides a itself, which tells us that we can write down these numbers very easily. This is zero plus minus three plus minus six and so on and so forth. So we get that set. Good. So now let's look at another example. So let's do the equivalence class of one. Let's use the same n of three. So that's equal to all a n z such that a is congruent to one mod three. So in other words, a minus one is, is divisible by three. So let's see, let's start off small. So one is obviously in this set because one minus one is zero and that's divisible by three. Four is a member of this set because four minus one is three and that's divisible by three. Seven is in this set because seven minus one is six and that's divisible by three, 10 and so on. And now we can go backwards. So negative two is in this set because negative two minus one is negative three and that's divisible by three. Negative five is in this set and then so on and so forth. So we can go backwards as follows. So we get the following. Now let's do one more. So two. So that's equal to all a in z such that a is congruent to two mod three. Good. Now, you might guess that two is a member of this set, again, because two minus two is zero and that's divisible by three. And then we can work up. So we have eight is a member of that set, 11 is, and then back in the other direction, minus one is, minus four is, and so on and so forth. So now, if you notice, these three sets, we can find all of the integers in one of these sets. So 
So if we want to find the integer one, it's right here. If we want to find the integer two, it's in this set. Three is in this set. Four is in this set. Um, oh, I left off five is a member of that set, and so on and so forth. So we can find all of the integers in this set, in, in one of these sets, and also none of these sets overlap. So uh, one way to say that is that these sets partition the integers. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, um, and then we'll look at one more property of uh, this equivalence modulo n. So we've looked at the definition of congruence modulo n. We've looked at the equivalence classes that are built from congruence modulo n. So uh, I'll list this as a fact. Uh, I'd say to prove it is like a good exercise. You can probably find it in the textbook. Um, but uh, we could say that <coughs> there are um, exactly in uh, equivalence classes modulo n. And those equivalence classes are given as follows. So 0, 1, 2, to n minus 1. So as you can guess, um, every integer is in one of these equivalence classes. Um, and furthermore, that leads us to this important definition of uh, this notion of the least residue. So um, if we fix in the set of least residues, is given by the set 0, 1, up to n minus 1. And you want to think of it like this. Every element in this set of least re residues is like attached to one of the equivalence classes. And so here, let's make a claim. Um, so for all uh, integers n, um, a, so sorry, for all integers A, A um, is equivalent, so sorry, A is congruent to exactly one of the least residues modulo N. So, in essence, what this means, this means that if you're talking about arithmetic modulo n or the numbers modulo n, you only really need to talk about the numbers 0 through n minus 1. So let's go ahead and prove this, which this proof is quite simple using the division algorithm, so that's what we'll do. So let's use the division algorithm with... Um, a and n, and notice that'll allow us to write A equals n times Q plus R with R is between 0 and n, including 0 but not including n, but I'll change that a little bit. I'll let's put a uh, less than or equal to there and put then, then put a minus 1 there. Good. And then notice it follows from this that A minus R equals N times Q, right? But that means that N divides A minus R, and in turn, A is congruent to R mod N. So that means A is congruent to a number between 0 and n minus 1, in other words, one of these least residues. And the exactly one part comes from the fact that these num this number Q and R in the division algorithm is unique. So that means it's congruent to exactly one of these numbers. Okay, good.